If you're playing Lies of P and you want better performance, this video is for you. In this quick guide, I'll be taking you through the best settings to keep the game looking great and performing even smoother. Do note that this guide won't go into Windows optimization at all, so instead in the description down below you'll find a Windows 10, 11 and Nvidia optimization guides as well as anything else relevant. For now, we'll hop into the actual game itself. On the main menu, we'll simply click across to settings and we'll begin on the graphics tab. Starting from the very top, screen mode. This should absolutely be set to maximum screen, or in other words, full screen, for the best, most consistent performance with the least input latency. As for resolution, it should definitely match your monitor and be a native resolution. For me, it'll be 2K, for you it could be 4K, 1080p, etc. Max frame rate at least isn't limited to just 60. We can crank it up pretty much as high as we want here or set it to unlimited for the maximum frame rate possible. Do note that if you were to set this to unlimited and for some reason your streams and things like that start lagging, assuming you're a content creator, you may want to come back here and cap your FPS to just a little bit below what you're getting to leave some graphics card available for OBS and programs like that. For me, unlimited should be fine to benchmark performance. Then VSync should definitely be turned off unless you're getting screen tearing where the top of the bottom half of your monitor don't match up. In the adjust brightness section, this is entirely your preference, though enabling HDR will improve the quality a ton if you have an HDR compatible display. If you were to enable HDR, you may notice a few frame drops, but the performance difference shouldn't be that big. For the massive quality gain though, if you have HDR available, I'd highly recommend using it. Then AMD FSR 2. In this game, we have two options, FSR R2 and NVIDIA DLSS. This is great. You can only choose one of these at a time, or at least you should. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I'd highly recommend using NVIDIA DLSS here. Set this to quality to begin with, even if you have an absolutely overkill setup. This should result in a huge amount of FPS gained. As for DLSS sharpness, there isn't much that you need to do here, but you can lower this if you're getting an over sharpened appearance while using NVIDIA DLSS. Usually 0.5 or 0.3 is pretty good. Do note the more to the performance end you push it, the more performance you'll be gaining, but do note the further you go down this list, the more weird visual artifacts you'll notice, ghosting when looking around quickly, etc. Quality and balance are good places to start, and I'd recommend keeping it to one of those while we adjust some of the other settings. If you have a graphics card that isn't an NVIDIA one, you'll be using AMD FSR2 instead. Set this once again to quality or balanced, all of the same pros and cons apply here. Then we have AMD Fidelity FX Cacao. What exactly is this? Cacao stands for Combined Adaptive Compute Ambient Occlusion. Essentially, this has to do with lighting around objects as they touch other objects, and having this enabled should result in better looking gameplay as objects will have more realistic shadows on other objects. Though this specific option here is optimized for RDNA graphics cards, in other words, AMD graphics cards. If you have this enabled on anything other than AMD graphics cards, you may notice a performance hit, so you might want to change this off if you don't have an AMD card. But for me, I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so I'll definitely be using DLSS instead of it. Though do note you can also use Fidelity FX Cacao, even though we're not using super resolution up here. For now, I'll leave it on. Then finally, graphics quality presets. In here, we'll click graphics detail settings after we choose a option that should somewhat match what our system is. If you have an overkill system, set it to best and work your way down. Otherwise, if you have a super low end system, set it to low and work your way back up. For now, I'll leave it on best and head into graphic detail settings. Now we have quite a few options in here, but no previews, unfortunately. Starting at the very top with visibility. For visibility, otherwise known as maybe draw distance or view distance, you'd want this set to somewhere around probably medium for the best, most consistent performance. Anti-aliasing, you can definitely drop down to low unless you absolutely hate jagged edges and sharp, weird, pixely edges and corners, in which case you can raise this, but low should be good enough. Post-processing is usually definitely worthwhile dropping to medium for consistent performance in gameplay. The same goes for effect quantity down here as well. I'd also drop this down to medium as explosions and things like that could cause your FPS to drop quite a bit, especially on lower end systems. If you find that your FPS is dropping around particles and things like that, this is the one option you'll come back and drop further. As for shadow quality, I wouldn't recommend pushing this anything below high as quite a few lights disappear when you're in game, lowering the overall lifelike or alive feeling that the game has. If you set this to 
too low, you'll lose that extra bit of immersiveness. So I wouldn't recommend dropping it below high, but raising it to best, you shouldn't notice any difference quantity or performance wise, but dropping it below high, you will gain some performance. But once again, things won't look as good, especially when it comes to lights around the scene, things will be more difficult to see and you won't feel as immersed. Then texture quantity. This completely depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has. Having this set too high will cause you huge FPS drops, but having it set too low won't actually gain you anything. So for graphics cards with anywhere above eight gigabytes of VRAM, have it set to best and forget about it. Anything above six gigabytes, set it to high, four gigabytes, medium, and anything below four gigabytes of VRAM, set it down to low. For me, I have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, so I can push this up to best for a consistent gameplay experience. Speaking of, we've already gone through effect quality, jumping down to vegetation quality. As this game is gonna be exploring around, as you are gonna be traveling around, quite a bit, sometimes through wooded areas. This is an option that you'll probably want to drop down to medium or even low if you find that your experience in game is choppy, especially when outside. Dropping this to low will make things look a little bit weird. Medium is a great spot for this to be. The same goes for shading quality here. It's not going to be the most noticeable of effects, but setting it to medium is probably where you'll want to have it set. As anything higher, the visual difference is not really going to be something that you're noticing. Reflection quality, this can be a huge FPS hit if you have it set too high, dropping it down to low for the best possible performance or medium for better looking areas. Personally, I'd push this down to low just to keep everything more consistent, especially in areas with lots of reflections. The volumetric fog is usually something you don't think costs too much FPS wise, but it can definitely be an FPS hog in some games. Setting it down to low will lower visibility through fog. Having it set to medium is a good spot for it to be. Anything above this and you're pretty much wasting extra performance on fog. Then ambient occlusion quality. This has to do with shadows on other shadows. We did go through this previously with AMD Fidelity FX Cacao, and I'm not too sure what having this setting pushed up and down would have on gameplay with that other option running at the same time. Ambient occlusion quality, I'm pretty sure would affect how the AMD Cacao works in the background, but I'm not entirely too sure on that one. I'd recommend pushing this down to medium for consistent gameplay while keeping things looking really good. Finally, anisotropic filter quality. Quality. This shouldn't have too much of a performance impact, especially on modern hardware, so you can comfortably leave it at best. With all of our settings set here, we'll close out of it, make sure our FPS is uncapped, and with everything set as is, close out and head into the actual game itself to get a performance benchmark with our optimized settings at 2K. All right, so there we go, starting off in the main area here. We're sitting at a solid 200 FPS with our optimized settings. Things look pretty good for what they are. DLSS on quality, I should probably be playing with the controller to be honest but anyways in this very starting area 200 fps isn't bad without optimized settings the game still looks really good things are a little bit blurry so sharpening for dlss is maybe something you'll want to raise but for now it's probably good enough we'll get out of the starting area and into a more open area for better fps examples and outside here we're sitting at a solid 185 fps Still not bad, but it could definitely be improved on lowering settings further. We'll quickly pause the game here, head into settings, and customize things a bit further. So from 186 with our optimized settings, let's crank it all the way up to best. Then we'll head back into game, and we're at a solid 150 FPS. Obviously, this graphics card is absolutely overkill for the game, and performance is pretty good out of the box, especially on newer hardware, but there was an improvement with practically no FPS difference. Let's quickly disable the DLSS and entirely as well and the graphics to see what native resolution performance we get and as you can see 120 ish fps it's also pretty good but having dlss enabled improved it dramatically from 180 to 120 with no dlss we'll use amd fsr instead and push that to quality having a look once more we're sitting at a solid 160 fps and it's noticeably less blurry yeah sharpening is definitely something we'll want to raise if we're using a dlss let's try disabling that and getting a benchmark 123 fps we'll pause settings and try disabling amd fidelity fx cacao by doing so we moved up maybe a handful of fps three maybe four but there's not too much of a difference here's without and here's with a very small if not a noticeable difference but we do have a little bit of a performance impact which could especially be noticeable on lesser systems we'll pause the game settings and run through each of these options individually between best and lowest so Starting off, we're setting at 123 FPS. 
jumping visibility from best to lowest. There's no performance impact here. So I would assume that's an option you can comfortably lower as in much larger, much more open and distant cities, you'll notice more of an FPS drop than in starting closed off areas like this. From 124 with anti-aliasing on best, we've now dropped it to the lowest option and jagged edges really aren't an issue, which is good. They'll especially be even less of an issue if using an upscale like DLSS or AMD FSR, which I'm not at this current point. Sitting at a solid 124, not much has changed at all. Post processing from best to low, we've gained seven FPS, moving from 123 to 130 FPS. Once again, a very small impact in visuals, but I would assume during combat and with flashy things going on, that's where you'll mainly notice this effect being turned down in quality. From 130 with shadows on best down to the lowest, we're now at 144, gaining 14 FPS, which is pretty good. That's about 10% between best and lowest, but shadows are definitely noticeable as missing from this current scene. If we raise it from low to medium, a few of them reappear and it looks a little bit better, medium to high, and finally best. So back down to lowest, we're at 144 FPS. Texture quality from best to lowest, still a solid 144. Obviously it comes down to VRAM and there should be no performance impact, especially if you're not running out of VRAM while playing the game. Effect quality from best to lowest, we jump from 144 to about 148, the low 150s. That's probably six or so FPS, maybe five or 4% performance impact, definitely something, especially when nothing's going on, but you get the point. From 148-ish FPS to 148, with vegetation all the way down to the lowest, obviously pretty much no difference as there's no vegetation in this area. That'll be very situational. So again, if you find yourself dropping performance around foliage, that's definitely an option to want to drop. From 148 to 148, a little bit more stable, we dropped shading quality from best to lowest. Very little noticeable impact on how the game looks, but as for performance, also practically no difference. Reflection quality from best to lowest, once again, practically no difference, as there's not too many reflections around me at this current point in time. I would assume around glass puddles and things like that, you'll notice more of a difference, especially when it comes to FPS and how the game looks. Volumetric fog from best to lowest, I would think that visually things are a little bit more difficult to see in a distance, and we are now sitting at around 154-ish FPS, gaining about 5 from before. A very small difference in performance, once again you'd probably want this a little bit higher than lowest for the best visibility through fog. Ambient occlusion, turning that off, we jumped about 4 or 5 FPS, with very little visual impact as well, sitting at a solid 160-ish, that's a good improvement. Finally, anisotropic filter in quality, we gained no FPS, dropping it from the best to the lowest option, and there's a very small difference in in-game fidelity. That's it. We're now running with everything set to the lowest possible setting, and we're setting at 160 at 2K native resolution on a 3080 Ti. Cranking it up to the best options, we drop to 120, so a total of about 30 FPS in difference between the best and lowest options. And as for visual, the lighting changed quite a bit. That's very noticeable. What changed it was actually shadow quality. Here's low, medium, high. Suddenly the lights are back and things look a lot more lifelike or realistic or alive for that matter. And finally, best. So obviously that setting I wouldn't recommend cranking down below high if you have the ability to as it adds quite a bit to the scene while you're playing. So there you have it, a full optimization guide. If you insist on playing everything on the lowest possible settings, I definitely recommend raising the shadow quality to at least high to add quite a bit of life back to the game. And obviously for a huge performance gain, use NVIDIA DLSS, probably around 0.5 sharpening, actually maybe even higher. 0.7, that seems okay, for a huge performance boost. Otherwise, you can use Fidelity FX, AMD FSR 2, to get a huge boost in quality and FPS as well. The quality definitely seems much less blurry with AMD FSR over DLSS, even if you have NVIDIA graphics cards, but that's your preference. Anyways, that's about it for this quick guide, so thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.